Hi guys, welcome back or welcome if you are new here. Um, today I'm going to break down everything you need to know about nutrition in relation to fitness and exercise, things you should be eating, how to lose weight effectively, how to gain weight or how to maintain your weight if you are if you found that sweet spot that works for you. So I know it can be super confusing especially with all these diets, all the slimming clubs, I think we started on those. Um, all of that information, especially with social media now, it's hard to know what to believe, what's true, what isn't, what works, what doesn't. So I thought I would break it all down for you and just tell you the basics of what you talk about is your total daily energy expenditure which is TDEE. Now that's comprised of a couple of different components. The first one and the largest one is your BMR or RMR and that is the amount of calories your body burns without doing anything just for basic functioning basically to keep you alive. So you can calculate that by inputting into a calculator, I'll link one down below, um, your age and your height, um, gender, I think that's it. Um, and then it will basically come up with a number for you um, based on those figures. So with that number, we also add on the TEF and the TEE, which is thermal effect of feeding, so how many calories you burn eating, and the thermal effect of exercise, which is your daily exercise. So if that's a run, walk, swim, session in the gym, whatever it is, we add those all together and you get your TDEE. So the way to work that one out is again another calculator i'll link it below but you put your bmr in so that's the first figure the big one which is all the calories you burn without thinking about it in the day and then it takes into consideration your lifestyle so what job you have whether you're sedentary whether you're sitting down at a desk all day whether you've got a hard like active job how many times you exercise a week all of that takes it all into consideration and that all of those things added together is your total daily energy expenditure so once you've got that number, um, we we can work out what you need to do to lose, gain or maintain your weight. Another thing that is considered in your daily expenditure is the NEAT. So that is your non-exercise energy that is expended throughout the day. So that's things like taking the stairs instead of the lift, um, going for a walk, getting off the bus, a stop early, all things like that. So anything that's not planned exercise comes under NEAT and that is part of your total daily expenditure as well. So to lose weight you need to be in a calorie deficit. I'm sure you've all heard it before but that means that you either need to eat less or move more. Preferably a little bit of both tends to be a good balance. So you want to start that cut small. If you're going to st start to cut your calories um, I recommend actually just tracking a plain a plain week or a few days without thinking about it and just tracking it into an app such as my fitness pal or i use the one that is in fitbit um and just tracking a few days without thinking about it and just seeing what your numbers come up with because it could vary and it will vary from day to day depending on obviously if you're going out if you're staying in how much you're exercising all of that can drastically change how much how many calories you eat in a day especially if you're not aware of it or you're not used to tracking if you've never tracked before so i recommend tracking for a few days and just seeing what the numbers are and then from there you can see how that compares to your total daily expenditure if you are going to cut your calories back i recommend not doing it by more than 10 percent of your tdee so you want to start nice and small you can gradually increase it but you do want to give your body chance to adapt and take in what you're doing basically you're changing what you're doing and your body needs time to adapt to that so then to gain weight you need to create a calorie surplus which is the opposite so again you want to do it gradually you want to increase your daily calories nice and slowly starting with about even like 50 more calories than you're eating to begin with and really slowly increase them until you're at a good amount and again it's going to take time to let your body 
Um, and then obviously to maintain your weight you want to eat exactly or around that um, TDE number that you got from the calculator. So you don't want to differ too much. If you eat more one day you might want to eat less the next day and vice versa just to keep those numbers nice and level. It is worth saying at this point um, all these numbers should be used as a guide only and not like strict. It's also worth noting that your BMR can and will change so if you haven't um, inputted your details in in a long time to work out a new BMR then I recommend doing that before starting any new kind of plan. Things that can impact your BMR and change it are things like your age, how much you weigh at the time, your daily activity, your body compositions, how much muscle and fat you have. If you have a larger muscle composition in your body then you're going to have a higher BMR than if you have less muscle so that is worth noting and also your hormones can affect it as well. All of that is also linked to your metabolism so your BMI is basically your, meta your metabolism. You cannot damage your metabolism that is a big fat myth. You can however have an adapted metabolism so it can adapt depending on what training you're doing and what food you're eating etc. Prolonged dieting and restriction can lead to a adapted metabolism so this is generally what people think is a damaged metabolism but it's not damaged it's just changed and adapted to how you've been treating your body basically. Prolonged dieting and restriction will reduce your BMR because you're a lower weight providing that you've lost weight on your diet so you're going to have a lower BMR which means you're burning less calories naturally that also means that you're probably going to be a little bit more hungry because you're dieting you're restricting your body and when you have been dieting for a long time or if you cut your calories too much you're going to reduce your need um, whether it's subconscious or not you're going to move less subconsciously because you're feeding your body less so all of that prolonged dieting and restriction, reducing your knee, increasing your hunger, all of those things put together is going to result in you hitting a plateau. To recap, reasons you are not losing weight are probably that you're not in a calorie deficit, that you're not eating the right amount of foods compared to what your body needs, so whether that's your targets are incorrect, whether you've been miscalculated, given the wrong targets by your trainer or coach or whoever it is, so it might be worth recalculating your food targets. You might be eating more than your targets. You might not be expending enough energy, so whether that's you need to add in an extra hit session or you just need to move around more. So just from day to day, get more steps in, take the stairs, stuff like that. It may also be that you have a medical issue underlying or a physical condition. And in that case, if you think that you're in that situation, then please get a referral from your doctor and don't just rely on your PT or online coach to sort that out for you. So you've got your numbers, your total daily expenditure, the amount of calories you think you should be eating, what next? So it doesn't just matter how many calories you're eating, it's also important to consider where those calories are coming from. So you've probably heard of macros, they are carbohydrates, fats and protein and that is what our diet should be made up of, the three main macronutrients. The RDA recommend 50% carbs, 15% protein and then 35% fat. Now that is just a guideline, that is not optimal for everyone, for example that is not optimal for elderly, the young people as in like children, um, if you're pregnant, if you have any kind of illness that might not be optimal for you those percentages so that is um, negotiable that's like able to be moved around to fit your diet so your carbs do want to be about 50% of your diet and then some people may need more protein and then some people prefer to have less fat or more fat so those two are kind of interchangeable depending on what kind of diet you like to eat and what your goals are so we've established that it's not just a number that is important so I'm going to put a little triangle pyramid here and we're going to talk about the hierarchy of what order things matter in. Some people will say that the time that you eat is the most important, you're going to lose the most weight if you don't eat breakfast until 12pm or something like that. So let's have a look at that. So the most important thing at the bottom of the pyramid is your energy balance. So that's what we just spoke about, the total energy expenditure versus what you're burning. So, sorry, what you're burning versus what you're eating. So you want that energy balance to be correct. So if you're trying to lose weight, the energy balance 
needs to be less and then if you are trying to gain weight the balance needs to be higher after that we have macros so that's your carbs fat and protein i would always recommend hitting a protein goal first and then letting the others slide into place after that so if you're hitting your calories next goal is to hit your protein target and that can be all calculated based on your goals your body weight etc as well i'll leave it down below after that we have our micros on the next layer of the pyramid so that is all your vitamins minerals all those other nutrients often get forget forgotten about they come after your macros so macros are most important then we have the micros on top they are also important after that we have timing so that is the time in which you eat whether that's an hour before training what you eat after training all of that your meal timings whether you want to give intermittent fasting a go any of those things that comes next so that's right at the top of the pyramid the final thing at the point of the pyramid is supplements people think that supplements are the be all end all of your diet they're gonna be the thing that make you either lose or gain weight but the truth is they're at the top of the pyramid they can be important in your diet if you need them but you need to focus on all the things below them first so i spoke a little bit about timing but i just wanted to debunk one myth which is breakfast is the most important meal of the day we've all heard it a million times i've said it myself but the truth is it's not true it might be true for you it's true for me if i don't have breakfast i cannot function but it's not true for everyone if you function fine without breakfast and you feel like you can do more you can function at your highest without having breakfast then you do you, you carry on. However, it is important to consider that having no breakfast may mean that you subconsciously move less throughout the morning, which means that you may not be in that calorie deficit you need to be in if you want to lose weight. That is just a consideration. Of course, it's different for everyone, and just because you haven't had breakfast does not mean that you're not gonna move more. And that's also going to be dependent on your lifestyle, on your job, etc. It also does not re result in a low blood, blood sugar levels most of the time. Obviously, sometimes that might affect you in that way, but it does not affect everyone in that way. And again, it is completely personal preference. So it's something for you to figure out. Try and see what works for you. Don't do it just because your friend is doing it, because it works for them, doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So yeah, breakfast or no breakfast, it's totally up to you. The next myth that I want to debunk is around fat loss and whether you can target it or not. So <clears throat> the truth is you cannot target fat loss. Now that doesn't mean that you can't focus on losing weight from one area. It means that the fat you cannot control where you lose fat from. So you could be on the strictest diet and the fat could come off your stomach the last. Like it's different for everyone. Some people just lose weight from where they want to straight away which is fine and then some people find that it goes from where they don't want it to they don't want it to go from again it is different for everyone and just because you can't target fat loss does not mean that you cannot get the body shape you want because we can target where we gain muscle so for example if a client told me that they wanted to lose stomach fat and tone up their legs for example we would put them in a calorie deficit so that the fat loss is happening all over and then we would target those areas that they wanted to work on through strength and through strength and muscle training so basically where you want to target fat loss is actually where you want to target your muscle growth next thing i wanted to address is what should you eat before training now this again is going to be different for everyone whatever works for you now if you have carbs before training this may reduce your RPE which is the rate of the rate of perceived exertion which is basically how hard the workout feels for you so if you have more carbs the workout's likely to feel easier because you've got more energy to burn carbs before training will also increase your training intensity and can improve your strength training so having carbs before your workout is definitely beneficial Fasted high intensity exercise will use more carbs, whereas fasted low intensity exercise will use more fat in terms of what you burn. So that's something to consider. Um, again, it doesn't really matter which one you go for. 
And it was also important to remember that fat burning does not equal fat loss. Again, to be in that fat loss um, situation, we need to be in a calorie deficit. That is the most important part. But yeah, burning fat does not equal fat loss. The final point I want to make is about hydration. You know I bang on about being hydrated and upping your daily water intake all the time. And it is an important part of your diet and nutrition. It's so important to be hydrated and it can impact your training and exercise and day-to-day -day life. So make sure you get that hydration. I recommend drinking a big glass of water first thing when you wake up before you have your coffee. And then also I take a glass of water to bed at night. So I have a glass before bed. Not too close to bed though, otherwise you end up weeing all night, fun fact. Um, but yeah, I have a glass of water by my bedside so that when I wake up it's the first thing I do is drink the water. Other tips for staying hydrated are to have a glass of water with every meal um, and you can try and do it before and after you've eaten as well so you're just doubling that water intake and always have a glass of water or a water bottle next to you. I hope this video was useful for you. If you do have any more questions feel free to put them in the comments or message me directly and I'll be glad to help. There's so much that I could go into in this but I wanted to try and keep it quite brief and a basic overview of nutrition rather than going into too much detail. So I hope I haven't oversimplified it too much and at the same time I hope you learned something from this. So yeah, see you next time.